I think I think it may be working. It it's like a miracle it's working because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> um Okay, so oh, like two people, can you hear me? All right. Can you see the screen maybe? I don't know if I'm doing something wrong here. So <laughs> Okay, um, so um, I don't think it would be a long stream, maybe just something like one hour, maybe. Um, oh, hi. Um, okay, also like the webcam is really up high. It's quite intimidating, but I couldn't find a, a better angle. <laughs> um, so what's the deal? Um, I'm writing a small compiler for like a um, markup language. Um, so my, my teacher, cause I, I'm a teaching assistant and in a university course about uh, the uh, databases, uh, relational databases, the ER model, etc. Et and uh, um, the tool we use to teach students is called uh, dbmain, I think. It has like this GUI where you can compose ER schemas and then turn them into uh, the SQL queries that can create the corresponding schema, etc. Um, we don't really like it, but uh, we had no choice. It's like the tool we have always used for, for a long time. Uh, but like a, a couple of months ago, I think, we were talking about maybe trying to write this small markup language where we could like define database schemas and yeah, that's it. So we wanted it to look like uh, it's mainly something that would be used just for teaching. Uh, we wanted something that would look like uh, an ER schema. So I don't know how familiar you are with that, but like maybe I can show you something here. Uh, so like, for example, you have entities, you have relationships, uh, um, like, and you have these boxes, which are entities. So for example, we have one person and each entity must have like uh, a key that is used to identify it, attributes and so on. And, and it looks like this, we have relationships uh, that are these diamonds, etc. Et um, you get an idea. Uh, so, what I wanted to do was to get something that could look similar. <laughs> so here's why here are all these lollipops. So these are attributes. This is the key of the entity. And I quite like it. Maybe it's not the best syntax ever, but just to get something that has the same feel, uh, I think it's nice. Also, it, it was quite easy. So <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, thanks. I'm happy you like it. Yeah, yeah, we, we were really happy about this syntax. <laughs> um, so um, this is, for example, a composed key because you, you can have keys that are composed by uh, multiple attributes. So, for example, if you have two attributes and you, wa you want to compose them into a key, you can do that. Um, and this is a key with a single attribute, etc. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do, like it, it was nice because uh, writing the parser in Gleam was super nice. Like uh, in, I think, three days, I was looking at the Git history the other day. In maybe three days, I could write almost all of the parsing of the AST. Um, I didn't think it would take so little. Like I, I genuinely thought it would take me like a week or so, but yeah, it, it, it was nice. Um, and maybe I can show you that and then I can uh, start coding <laughs> since this should be a live coding and not me uh, talking for an hour. Um, so here is the parser. It's just like uh, a thousand lines of pattern matching and that's it. <laughs> and um, there are a lot of, because one of my goals was, was to have like really nice error messages. So there are lots of cases that are just there to catch like common mes uh, common mistakes, for example, spelling mistakes, etc. So for example, if you write something like this, 
it says, hey, maybe you wanted to write the uh, O lollipop, and, and that is just a typo, uh, which is nice. Um, and the first thing I wanted to do today was to improve uh, a kind of error message, because uh, here we have uh, composed keys, so you can, as I said earlier, compose m multiple attributes into a single key, uh, but if you forget to add the, uh, the name after the ampersand, what you get is this error, which is the wrong key name error, because basically the browser expected to find a key name after the ampersand, but it found a lollipop, which is not a valid name. Um, but I, I like to it to have like a better error message because uh, if I find find the ampersand there, um, my idea is that he wanted to write a composed key, not a single key. Uh, so I could try to give a better error message with also better uh, context to show the error. So my idea was to have something like this. So this part is underlined and it says, hey, uh, this looks like, like a composed key. Maybe you forgot to add the last attribute here. You could add it uh, because this is not a valid attribute, but it could also highlight all this part and be more precise about what the programmer maybe wanted to do. So yeah, let's start working on that. Um, so, um, first of all, I'll need to add a new error case, but I think I'll start from the uh, parser. Yeah, I start from the parser and see what happens. So, um, we have to look for the, uh, I think I called it composed key, maybe, parsing. So, no, multi-attribute key. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, here we have the multi-attribute key parsing, and right here is the error message. So if it finds, if it cannot find like a word, um, uh, it says, "Okay, this is not a key name." So here is the error. I want a better error. So for now, I just do this parse error, like what what I wish I could I could use, and then I'll I'll implement that. So parse error and uh, incomplete. Uh, multi attribute uh, composed key, uh, so incomplete composed key, and here we have the enclosing entity. So this is uh, some piece of um, context that I use in my error messages to show like the um, enclosing uh, entity or upper entity that the key is defined into. So to give the user like a better understanding of exactly where the error is taking place. So here we have the entity span. Uh, and also I wanted uh, to highlight the, the whole composed key. So all this piece, not just the star lollipop. Uh, so here we have the composed key span maybe. And for now it's just a to-do. Uh, then what can, yeah, we have the wrong key because we also want to say, hey, uh, I, maybe this, this looks like a composed key, but this is not a composed key name. So, uh, you, you, you should fix that. Uh, so wrong key, which is just the token web that we've just found the wrong key span just to, this span is used to uh, highlight it, so under, un, underline, highlight, no, wait, I think it's underline, yeah, underline it, uh, wrong key span, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I hope Rob, some, some, uh, Rob joins the, the stream, because he can help me with my English, uh, and I can start speaking Italian, <laughs> uh, to do, add hint, uh, and that's it. Okay, now we have to add this error um, because of course it's not defined yet. So let's go to the parse error and add a new case here. So it's a, uh, whoops, incomplete, uh, how did I call it? Incomplete composed key and it has an enclosing definition, which is 
uh, yeah, I think it's, it's always there because you cannot define. So the, the enclosing definition, sometimes it, it could be missing. For example, if you don't have one, so if you're a top level entity, uh, for example, here, entity prova, uh, wait, test. So entity test is like a top level entity, so it doesn't have an enclosing definition, but here the key has an enclosing definition, which is the test entity. Um, the int, which is an optional string, and it's there everywhere. So for now, I don't have any kind of ints, but I want the compiler to be more helpful for beginners, especially for students who are learning about the ER model. So it, it may point to, for example, useful resources or better explain why something can be possible. So for example, there is this error. Uh, maybe I can show you, wait, so let's get this to compile and then I can show you some nice errors. <laughs> so yeah, my problem is I get sidetracked uh, really easily. So uh, uh, what was I doing? Why is this here? Oh, wait, maybe it's in Glim, in the new Glim version. Did I miss it? Okay, well, well I I'll look into that later. So uh, wrong key, wrong key span and hint. So wrong key, which is just a string. Uh, wrong key span, span, and what's missing? The composed key span, which is crucial because that's like the whole point of having this. So the composed key span. Okay, so that should be it. Yeah, now I'm missing a lot of I'm missing a lot of uh, cases. So here I have the error codes. So um, the incomplete uh, composed key and just a bunch of these. I hope I get it right on the first try. E029. Yeah, great. Um, now this is just to get a nice name for the error because well, I want to show like the, the nice error name. So incomplete composed key. And here we have incomplete comp oh, composed key. Um, here we have, oh yeah, okay. So the main span, the main span is like the span that is pointing to the starting point of the arrow, which is the uh, used to get the line number to report like the, um, uh, the point uh, in the source code. So here the, I think the main span, so where the arrow starts, it should be like the wrong key span. So uh, incomplete uh, composed key, boom. And here the span is the wrong key span. So it is the, uh, fourth one, no, fifth one. Okay, so it's the last field. So here we have it. Spawn. Okay. Um, and now we have to. So, how does the error reporting work? Uh, basically, what I do is I turn the errors into uh, a report, which is just this data structure. It has a file name, source code, error name, etc. used to like show basic info. And then the most important part is this one. So the report blocks. Um, so for now, it's just two kinds of blocks, a context block and an error block. Uh, so a context block is just a piece of code that you want to show the, the user and it just outputs the code with the line number. The error block, however, it's like where the error is. So you can say, hey, um, so there, you can say point to this part, which is going to be highlighted in red. You may highlight a piece of code that comes before the pointed error. So this is kind of a limitation I have for now. I didn't want to like spend too much time with string manipulation. So forcing the error to be before the error message was just something to make it easier. Otherwise, all the pointy things, the arrows would, would get messy to render and I didn't want to lose time with that. So for now, it's just okay. I don't need anything too special. So 
that's it. And then we have the message that is displayed. Um, and basically the report is going to join all the blocks together and then display a nice error message. Uh, so uh, what I have to do is turn an error into a report and say what are the blocks that I have to show. And in order to do that, I have this huge pattern matching. I don't know if that's any good, but yeah, that's it. Uh, so here we can add a new case, which is, oh wait, uh, yeah, also this one, the main message of the error. So let's let's do that first. Um, we have an incomplete composed key and a bunch of things. This, if I recall correctly, is the wrong key. So we can use that to say, hey, this is not our key. So we could say, um, um, uh, wait. Just poo, <laughs> and that's it. I, I'll fix that later. I, I don't want to lose time trying to figure out what the better error message is. And run key. So here we have it, and last the block. So I turn the um, incomplete composed key into an error block. So for now, just this. Um, so what I'm going to do is non empty list dot. So non empty list is like this uh, a list that can never be empty. So when you create it, you have to provide a first element and then the other elements. So it, it, it uh, you make sure that it always has at least one element. Um, it's really handy. For example, for like reducing a list of things where you you need it to have at least one element. I, I think it's just neat. So. Uh, I use it where, whenever I need like something that needs at least one element or I'm sure it has at least one. Yeah, that's it. So new. Um, and I'll show a context block with the enclosing entity, so which is the first one, enclosing entity. Uh, closing entity. Okay. Wait. Oh yeah, the, the first one is the int, so in closing and the, the, yeah, that's it. Um, oh, in closing, wait, what is it? Oh yeah, in closing definition, yeah. Uh, here, so let's use the right name and also here in closing definition because um, maybe, Wait, a key can only be defined inside an entity, so it's always an enclosing entity. So yeah, enclosing entity is the right name to use. Uh, so let's go back here, entity, entity, and up here in the definition. So yeah, enclosing entity. Oh wait, which was the third one? So I got I made a mistake here, and that's it. Okay, so we should start seeing something, but I have a to do here. So uh, for now, let's just use this one. Okay, so here you can see the uh, context block which we used, which is the enclosing entity. It is displayed correctly. Um, so let's add the error block. So uh, here we have an error block. block. And uh, in the error block, what should I put? I can't remember. So the pointed piece, the highlighted piece, and the message. That's easy. So uh, the message is message of error. We just use the helper function. The pointed piece is the wrong entity span, so that's this one. Uh, wrong attribute, wrong key span, wait. Uh, wrong key span. And here we should put the highlighted thing, which is the um, composed key span. And we should have something. No, because oh, it wasn't. It was the wait. It should. 
be oh yeah it's an option so some of that great uh so we have a first problem yeah that is also a problem i have with my reporting thing which is um if the two underlying pieces overlap uh you get this uh bad looking thing uh i, I guess it's because the um, uh color codes in the string gets overridden but only partly so uh, it, it's just a mess the compiler shouldn't worry about that uh, it's a problem with the reporting library for now i didn't have any problem with that because uh the underlying pieces are not um uh they never overlap for now so <laughs> that's another thing to do later when i have time to figure that out for now i just hope everything goes right so here the fix should be easy yeah because i used the closing entity compose key span wait i think i got the things in the wrong order wait um Let's see the definition. So we have the compose key span, the enclosing entity, wrong key, and wrong key span. So wrong key span is the last one. Mm. Yeah, that should do it. Compose key span, message error. Um, wait. Let's try something different. Let's say I have this thing here. Okay, so uh, attribute and then <laughs> this, this monstrosity and then the open parentheses, which is what I was hoping to see there. So I think the problem is with the underlying piece. Let's try just to uh, use a different span. Yeah, oh, right. I shouldn't use the token span. Of course, that overlaps. It's the point I'm uh, underlining in red. So I should use the lollipop span at first and then we'll improve that. So lollipop span. And yeah, that works. Great. So what do we have here? Uh, incomplete composed key and we have this piece here and we say this is not a key. So this, incom this composed key is incomplete. Maybe you forgot to add the the last attribute name. Um, I want to underline everything here. So I wanted to say after this composed key, I found something that is not an attribute. So I should merge the lollipop span with the span of the last ampersand I find. So I should uh, uh, have that as another piece of the recursive call. So last ampersand span. Maybe. Uh, is that how you write ampersand? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, and I have to change a whole lot of things. So here we have the last ampersand span, which needs to be updated. And we pass that along. Um, and then we have a uh, recursive call somewhere else. Oh, oh, that's easy. So I just need to update the point. Ah, so the variable is never used. Let's use it. Um, so in the incomplete key, I merge two spans, which is span.merge, the lollipop span, and the last ampersand span. So that fixes it. And now the last problem is here. So. I just have to pass the last ampersand span I find here. And span. Yay, that works. Okay, uh, so now I, I don't want to lose time <laughs> writing a nice error message there. I do that later, not streaming, because that would be boring, right? Oh, hi, Ben. Yeah, is that you, Ben? Oh, hi. Yeah, great. Um, nice to see you. Um, so, yeah, that's it. A uh, new error message, which is poo, but yeah, I'll fix that later. I, I don't want to lose time here. So let me just commit that. I don't want to do those <laughs> huge commits where I just have a bunch of things that are completely unrelated. 
So yeah, it's just a new error message. So get it. Create. So what did I do? Add uh, composed incomplete composed key error. Incomplete composed key error. Yay! And that's it. Okay, so now on to something maybe a bit more interesting. Um, yeah, I have some tests here. I still have to like properly test the browser, but yeah, I've been I've been uh, keeping that for later. <laughs> okay, let's go to the AST checking. So basically, uh, I so we we just paused our file. We have a nice. AST, which is like really small because it's, the R model is not that uh, that complex. So we have entities, we have uh, 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 wait, where are they? Relationships, da, um, uh, and then we have uh, attributes, uh, cardinality. Uh, maybe I can show you like um, uh, an example that is a bit more complex. So for example, here we have. Uh, student entity, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. No, wait, uh, a person entity. I, I'm just copying what I remember seeing in some of the uh, old projects one of our students did. Oh, hey, who is that? I, uh, um, how are you doing? Great, thank you, thank you. But I, uh, I don't think I know you or at least I don't remember your username. Are you from the Glim Discord? Okay, sorry. Uh, I'll just keep going for now. Um, but I'm great, thank you. <laughs> oh, you, you're not from the Glim Discord. Well, you should join then. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Come to the dark side. Yeah, um, so what am I doing here? Yeah, I, I was going to show you something a bit more complex just to get an idea of how the uh, AST looks. So here we have, for example, um, a person entity which has an ID which is its key so there is this little piece of syntactic sugar if you define a key which is just a single attribute it's a shortened for writing this uh, so you don't have to write uh, ID and then ID once again so it, it, it can be handy if you are using just, just single attribute keys um, so it has an ID uh, and then it has a name, first name and last name, name and uh, last name. But then we also have a hierarchy. So in the R model, we can have entities which are uh, the root of a hierarchy. Um, and every hierarchy must specify its totality and overlapping. I, I think that's the name. I'm not sure. Sorry if I get the terminology wrong. Uh, so, for example, if it's a total hierarchy, we say that all the possible cases are uh, enumerated there. So you, you can see all the possible cases. And if it is disjoint, it means that um, uh, hierarchy... Oh, wait, maybe let's leave the uh, typo there. So we, we'll see the error message. Um, and if it is disjoint, we say so if it is one of these cases, it cannot be any other one. But if it is overlapped, then you can have something that is uh, more than one thing at once. Uh, I hope I'm making sense. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, that's it. We have a hierarchy and we have a sub-entity. So entity, for example, student, which is a kind of person. Uh, and maybe a student can have another key, which is its badge number. And yeah, that's it. I don't want to uh, do it uh, in more detail. Yeah, and you can see a nicer message. So I was expecting to find the hierarchy keyword after the qualifiers, and this is not the hierarchy keyword because there is a typo. Maybe it could be, maybe it could also be a, a bit smarter if if it finds something that is similar to hierarchy but not quite, but kind of similar. Uh, it could say, uh, "Did you mean to type hierarchy?" Yeah, um, I could try to add that later. I think it's not just that interesting to show now. Yeah, that's it. So here we have our, our entity. Uh, so how would that look like in, in the AST? So we have an entity. Um, 
we have well that is its spawn uh the name of the entity a list of keys because it can have many keys for example uh a list of attributes for example here we have first name and last name it can have an, a hierarchy that's optional so uh and that's at most one hierarchy so if you have more than one hierarchy um it should have what i think is a nice error message so for example if we add another one hierarchy here it says wait uh, an entity can only be the root of one hierarchy here is the first one and here is this another one maybe you could merge those together so it says <laughs> Yeah, you cannot have you cannot have more than one, so that's a mistake. Or maybe merge them together, and that's it. That's that's the fix. Um, so it could be a bit smarter, because for example, if I have two hierarchies that do not have the same qualifiers, for example, if I have a partial disjoint hierarchy, those two cannot be merged together, uh, because maybe you meant to uh, something different. So yeah, I could try to improve that, um, but I think that's fine for now. So that's it. Um, and what I want to do now is check that the uh, AST is correct because we catch a lot of errors in the parsing stage. So like, for example, no more than one hierarchy, etc. But um, there are other things that we can check. For example, uh, when we add a... Uh, wait, is my... I think someone is ringing at my door. I'll be back in a second. Okay, here I am. Uh, can you still see the screen? Oh, the use case explanation. Yeah, right. Okay, I, I can go about that. So can you still see my screen? Uh, or is it just a, a, a background or something? A green background? Because I, I should be streaming my sharing my screen right now, but I'm not sure. Okay, so I, I think now you can see it. I hope so. Because uh, I I can see it in the okay now we can great so um, what's the use case so the use case is this um, uh, basically I'm a teaching assistant at a university course where we teach uh, it's a database course a relational database course it, uh, an introductory course and we teach so uh, SQL the ER model, how to model things to put them in a database, etc. Um, and we use this tool, which is called dbmain, I think, uh, to draw the ER schemas. Um, but that is uh, quite hard to use. The students are always complaining about it. Also, I'm personally, I'm not a big fan of uh, graphical interfaces. Uh, if I can code it, I'm much happier. I can version control it, so I can like it's handy for me. So yeah, that's it. And me and my teacher, we were talking about it, and we had this idea of like a small markup language to define ER schemas. And yeah, that's it. So we wanted something that would look similar to ER schemas. So uh, I don't know if you. Oh wait, I was sharing before. Maybe I can try to do that again um, so I don't know how familiar you are with um, the ER schemas but basically what we do here is wait let me try to screenshot yeah so what we do is this we have these boxes re rectangular boxes which are entities and then we have relationships between entities um, and it looks like this, or at least that's the way we teach it. So we have boxes and they have these lollipops. Uh, the lollipops are black if they are a key, they are white if they are just an attribute. You can also have composed keys like these. So you're saying, okay, these two attributes together, they form a key for the entity and they are used to identify it. Uh, you also have hierarchies, so you can do something like this and have more entities and so on and so forth. 
and we wanted something that would look similar to that. Of course, it's impossible to get the 2D feeling of uh, drawing a graph <laughs> on uh, in, in a text file. Uh, so that's what we came up with. Um, uh, so here you have the uh, black lollipop for the keys. You have the empty lollipop for attributes. You have hierarchies. You can have uh, relationships. So to have relationships, you basically have two ways to... Yeah, yeah, I, I know, it's really readable, I really like it. <laughs> you you have relationships, so you can... Oh, wait, not caps lock. We don't do that here. So you you can have relationships. So for example, a person... Uh, wait, student in classroom. Uh, and it connects two entities. The two entities it connects are the student entity uh, and the classroom entity. Uh, I, I don't have a classroom entity here, and so we, we'll get to that. Um, so you're saying, okay, there is a binary relationship connecting students and classroom, but there's a mistake here, so let me just remove this one. There's a mistake here because we have to say the cardinality of the entities taking part in the relationship, so a student can only be part of one classroom, uh, maybe can be part of zero or one classrooms, and a classroom is composed of many students. And that's it, we have a binary relationship. Um, I also wanted to add like a shorthand to define binary relationship because I, I think that is handy. So inside an entity, you can also use the little arrow and say student in classroom. Um, and this defines a new entity and you say the cardinality of the student, you say the other entity that is taking part in this binary relationship, so you say classroom, the cardinality of the classroom, and yeah, that's it. So that defines another uh, a binary relationship. And that is exactly the same as writing this piece of code here, but it can be handy, for example, if you have a lot of binary relationship and you want to keep things together, so I, I don't want to like have this huge piece, uh, huge like file with uh, binary relationship that are everywhere and it can get messy. So I know this is relevant for students. Oh wait, for students, so it should go here. This is relevant just for students, so I add, I add it here. Um, uh, yeah, but for now let's just not uh, consider that. So that's it. But here we have a problem. It says uh, so we compile it. Uh, we pass it through the compiler and it says okay, that's fine. That's a nice. Uh, prequel program. So prequel is the name I we came. Uh, so I didn't come up with the name. It was one of my friends. It said he, he said, well, it comes before sequel because first you have to like design uh, like your your schema and then all the things. So it's a prequel. It comes before. Uh, it was really nice. So I kept it. <laughs> so you have a prequel program, but that's not a correct prequel prequel program because. Uh, we are referencing an entity that doesn't exist, the classroom entity. Uh, so we have a student entity, but not a classroom entity, so it should complain that this entity doesn't exist. Also, we could do some uh, wrong things, for example, having this kind of uh, cardinality. So this should be always, this is the lower bound, this is the upper bound, so the lower bound should always be lower, but for now it just doesn't complain. Um, Wait, looking at it, I see a bug in the pretty printer. It prints the entities in reverse order, but I'll fix that later. Um, so what I want to do is to implement the AST checking part. So we have to check, for example, that all cardinalities are correct, that uh, all entities and, uh, exist, that attributes we use for composed keys are actually existing. Uh, so if we say id and uh, foo, foo is not an attribute defined inside person, so that should be wrong because we are declaring a composed key uh, made of an attribute that doesn't exist, uh, and so on and so forth. There are many different checks that we can make. For today, I think we can start with something simple, which is this piece here I was showing you, so we can start by checking that uh, the cardinalities are correct, so that 
the lower bound is always lower than the upper bound. Um, okay, so let's do it. Uh, the piece of code that uh, we're going to uh, be looking at is cardinality, which can be an unbounded cardinality, so it only has... Uh, wait. I, I mixed the bounded and unbounded documentation. <laughs> uh, yeah, so a bounded cardinality is a cardinality where we have both an upper and lower bound. An unbounded cardinality is a cardinality where we have a lower bound, but we do not have an upper bound. We say n, and it's just a generic number n. So, for example, this is a bounded cardinality, one true. This is an unbounded cardinality because the upper bound is just uh, a generic number. So uh, let me see what can we do here. Um, yeah, so what we want to do is we are going to get all the bounded cardinalities and check that minimum is lower than maximum. That should be easy and report an error for, an, for every uh, wrong cardinality. That should be easy, but maybe it will be not. So who knows? Well, we'll try to do it in in maybe 20 minutes. Who knows? Um, let's maybe, yeah, new file. So validation.glim, which is going to validate the, the AST. So what are we going to do? We are going to import the uh, prequel EST, AST, um, and then we are going to write this function validate. Validate is going to take a module. For now I'm just going to, and maybe for a long time, I'm going to just deal with single files. I don't expect this to uh, immediately be used for, from, for st from by students, <laughs> be used by students for big things. I think for now we'll just use it like for, uh, with small examples. So I I'm not um, dealing with all the multiple files, multiple modules. I I'll do something simple now. So we take a module. Uh, okay, maybe I can just import it. I, I like to import the type names unqualified. And then we are going to uh, return what? We are going to return a list, wait, a result of nil. If everything is okay, I, I don't think we, we need to return the module. We are not going to change it, change it in the validation phase. Uh, but if there is an error, we are going to return a list of validation error. So we should define our pub type validation error and for now it's just a uh, example error oh wait no we have one we have a wrong uh, we have a lower bound bigger than upper bound error so this is the error that we are going to produce when we find our cardinality that has a lower bound that is higher than its upper bound um and we are going to have the wrong cardinality. So cardinality and cardinality. We are going to import it from the AST module. Cardinality, yeah, that's it. Maybe we could have a, yeah, we, we should definitely have a message. I think that for a, such a simple error, we could also like have uh, a fixed message. I don't think it's important to have like a, message that can change here. So for now I'll keep it simple and change it later if I think it needs a message that can be, that can change. So what are we going to do? We are going to return an okay nil for now. Um, uh, so what are we going to do? We are writing a function now that is going to check uh, bounded cardinalities. Okay, so uh, maybe that's horrible practice, but <laughs> I really like writing really long uh, names that are really uh, maybe even to the point of being uh, boring to read, but really long names that are 
very explicit about what they are doing. So if you look into the tests, there was like this test with, with a huge, super long name. Uh, it was like, check that scan returns expected token and spawn. I, I, I like long names. So I, I think it makes the code easier to read. Uh, when I come back to my code in like a week or a month, or even two days later, <laughs> if I have a really uh, explicative name, that, that always makes it easier for me. So yeah, it, it can be boring uh, or a hassle to write, but I think that pays off in the long time. So what I want to check, I want to check uh, cardinalities. Cardinalities uh, have lower bound, lower bound lower than upper bound. Uh, yeah, that's it. So I don't even need to write uh, a doc string because that, that's already clear. So we have a module, we take uh, as an input a module um, and we return a result. Result of nil and list validation error. So in the parsing stage, um, I just uh, stop at the first error and so if you if you uh, look at it, we, we can have maybe multiple errors. So here I have something that is not a cardinality, and here I have something that is not a cardinality annotation, um, but it just stops at the first error, because I didn't want to... Uh, so uh, one thing, it was uh, Lewis fault. Uh, I hope I'm not butchering the pronunciation of the name. I have no idea how your name is pronounced. I'm sorry if I'm butchering it. Uh, so uh, it's Lewis' fault because the game compiler, uh, if you don't know, uh, when it finds a, a syntax error, I think, it just stops there. Uh, and it says there is an error and it just doesn't, it, it stops there, it doesn't report m multiple syntax errors. And at first I was really annoyed with that because I'm used to having like loads of errors. Uh, but um i it kind of grew on me grew on me so right now uh, i i went for that as well here on one hand it's also easier to implement because when there is an er er error i just short circuit uh, at first i was trying to do something smart for example like consume uh other tokens get to a point where i can start parsing again and keep going in like a sort of error accumulating mode where I just get as much errors as possible. But it added a lot of extra complexity to the parser and I didn't think it was really worth it. So I just went back to the Glim way of doing it and just stopping at the first error. Yeah, that's it. So, but for validation errors, I think that is way easier and also it can be more valuable. So, um, because we have a, uh, syntactic, uh, a valid program syntactically, so we can then like display more errors that make sense. Um, so here I will try to display as much errors as possible, and if I find that it, that is annoying, I'll just maybe take the first element of the list and, and that will be it. Now that I'm thinking about it, if I return the error case, this should always have at least one error. So it could be a non-empty list. Uh, I don't think that adds too much value, but <laughs> you know I like it. I, I mean, I wrote the non-empty list library, so I'm biased. I, I want to use it as much as possible. So non-empty list, let's import it. So non-empty list, because it makes sense if you think about it. If we return the error case, this list must have at least an error. So I would find myself writing, uh, when dealing with the errors, let assert uh, first rest, uh, etc. because I know there must be an error there. So why not express that in the type system? So we are going to say that is a non-empty list. And if that makes things too complicated, we'll just go back to having a simple list. Okay, so we have to check that cardinalities have a lower bound that is lower than the upper bound. Um, so let's maybe, I can put the AST here and yeah, that should do it. Also for now, we'll just cover the Oh wait, no, <laughs> that's a bad idea because I have the compilation errors as well. So yeah, that, that, 
that's it. So we have to check a module. A module is composed of a list of entities, a list of relationships. Both entities and relationships can have cardinalities inside them, so um, so we have to check both. So what can we do here? We can first check the entities. So the entities, oh, we can do that. So gather cardinalities, I think cardinalities. Um, Okay, wait, so the error message here, at least it should also have the context. So we have an enclosing uh, definition, um, which is just a span that we are going to use to report a nice error message. So import pre slash span, not span. Yeah, so um, we should also have an enclosing definition. So I cannot just uh, if I'm going to gather cardinalities, so what I was thinking is writing this function that I, I can pass it a list of entities, uh, I can pass it a list of relationships, so from entities and from relationships, it is, uh, and it just returns a list of cardinalities. Um, and I can check the, those. But if I find an error there, I'm, I lose the information of where does the cardinality come from. So I can either do two things, um, maybe write the gather cardinalities that returns a couple, uh, a tuple uh, that is composed of the enclosing definition span and the cardinality span. I can see that uh, maybe giving me other problems, for example, if I want to add something more here in the future, I will have to change that, that is going to be boring. Maybe I could just do something different for example I can uh, check for example oh, let me just write something stupid here so check entities and what is it going to do I can give it the module entities and it's going to check the cardinality in the entities for now I'm not writing it uh, a, a, a long name because I'm sure I'm going to change this but I, I just put down what I what the idea is and then I just try to refactor that. So check entities. And what is this doing? It takes a list of entities and it's going to return a result. So I'm already writing this a lot of times. So I think I can declare a type alias because it's going to be boring writing that uh, a lot of times. And if I change it, I have to change it like in uh, a thousand different places. So validation result, which is this. Validation result. Okay, better. Um, and here we have a validation result. Validation result. Okay, so. Let's import entity here from the ST. And we can start also. So, um, what can have a um, uh, cardinality annotation? Keys can have a cardinality annotation, I'm sure about that, 99%. <laughs> it would be too bad if it didn't have one. Okay, it doesn't have one. <laughs> Okay, keys do not have a cardinality annotation. I think that's a mistake on my part because a single key can have... Oh, no, wait. Yeah, keys cannot have... Okay, I should trust myself more. <laughs> keys cannot have a cardinality annotation because for something to be a key, it must be a... It must have a 1-1 one, one cardinality. So it must always be there. It cannot be a, um, a, an attribute with a higher uh, upper bound. It must have both lower and upper bound of 1-1. One, one. So on, in the syntax tree, I, I forbid writing the cardinality annotation. Um, and it's always 1-1 one, one if you write a key. So what can have keys, uh, uh, cardinalities? I think it's only the attributes and something inside the relationships. So let's start with the attributes. An attribute as uh, it is defined here. So yeah, it has a cardinality. 
so we can check that. Um, so what we can do is let attributes equals. Oh, okay. So use. I love use uh, entity um, entities list dot flat map. I think it will that will be it. Yeah, because I'm returning a list. Yeah, yeah. Um, no wait. Uh, so let's let's just do this for now. So list dot map, and I'm mapping over the entities. entities. Uh, import glim slash list. Okay, so one thing in the new glim version that I I'm not quite a big fan of is that it doesn't move the the imports uh, up in the in the file. Uh, I really liked it that uh, in previous versions it would just poop, pop it up and move it out of the way, so I I didn't have to scroll up to <laughs> to add it. Uh, I don't know if that is. Uh, uh, like intended or just something that w we have overlooked, but yeah, I liked it better before. Uh, it just was, I, I could write an, an import here and then it save and it would disappear because the pretty printer just moves it out of my way. Uh, oh, okay, for foreign functions of race. Yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah, that could be, that, that could be it. Not sure. Yeah, I, I'm sure that if they did that, there must be a reason. But uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so here we have an entity, and what are we going to do? We are getting its attributes. So attributes and entity dot attributes. Okay. Uh, why is it complaining? Did you mean entity? Oh, wait, entities. Okay. So we get a list of attributes here, and um, yeah, for now let's just put a to-do here. I don't want to like, fight the compiler too much now. So attributes, we get a list of attributes, and what can we do here is get the attribute cardinality, so check attribute cardinality. And we are going to list dot map attributes check attribute cardinality. So what is going on here? We are taking the entities attributes. We can also do this. I think that's fine. Okay, and we are going to check all the attributes. Um, and what are we getting here? Um, so. Maybe check entities should return just a list of errors, and the list is empty if we do uh, of validation errors. Uh, so if the list is empty, we know there are no errors. If the list isn't empty, then we have errors. So um, uh, we get a list of validation error. Um, so we could flat map this and flat map over the attributes. So attribute and entity dot attribute oh wait list dot flat map uh entity dot attributes so i think yeah i think this is the best way I could i can come up with for now to to check this because here we can also get access to the enclosing entity, the enclosing attribute. So if we want to print nice error messages pointing to the exact attribute where the error is, the exact entity where the error is, we can do that. So that is really nice. Um, so I'm feeling good about this. Um, and what are we going to do here? So we are getting the attributes, uh, the, the single attributes, and we are going to turn it into a validation error. So this is just a map, not a flat map. Um, and we are going to check the attribute cardinality. So uh, how do we check it? We do these things where we get the cardinality, cardinality. Um, well, wait, this should be a flat map. Um, so we get the cardinality and we pattern match on it because we know that unbounded cardinality are always correct because the upper bound is a generic end. So there's no way of, for the programmer to, 
to specify a lower bound that is higher than that. So we pattern match on the attribute cardinality. Uh, if it's unbounded, we just we just return an empty list because we have no errors. If it is bounded, we can get the lower bound, bound the upper bound. And what are we going to do here? Yeah, maybe I should change these names. Minimum, maximum. I don't like it. I, I like it better lower bound and upper bound as a name. Uh, yeah, let's change it. So we have a lower bound here. We have a lower bound here. And we have an upper bound here. And the compiler will help me if I made a mistake. Okay, so if we have a bounded one, we get the lower bound, the upper bound. If the lower bound is higher than the upper bound, is greater, sorry. Um, what are we going to do? We are going to return an error. To do error. Yeah, that, that must be the new syntax for the to-dos. Maybe also, I, I remember we were talking about adding the same for panics. Oh yeah. That's nice. It doesn't complain, so that that must be it. I, I'll try that. Um, nice. I really like it. I I missed that on the release notes. Uh, how did I miss that? Yeah. Okay. And in all other cases, we are going to return an empty list. I like to. Uh, oh yeah, you missed that too. Okay, I'm not the only one then. Uh, I'm going to enumerate all the cases. I don't usually. I don't like the um, catch-all case, because if I'm going to add something in the future, then the catch-all is going to mess it up for me, the, the uh, exhaustivity checks. So I always try if I can, it, and it's not too difficult to like write all the cases down, and then, and then that, that hopefully in, in the future, if I add more things to my type definition, that can help, that can help me spot bugs earlier. Um, so lower bound, upper bound, if the lower bound is higher, what are we going to do? So maybe I can use an OR here to make it shorter. Yeah, great. I love, love this. Uh, okay. That is that. So yeah, bounded, what does it, oh yeah, I have to import that. So bounded and unbounded. Okay, that's it. Easy peasy. <laughs> okay, so let's see. This is working because I'm not. Uh, it, it isn't crashing with a panic because I still I I haven't um, uh, added the validation step in the in the pipeline. So uh, also I don't think I'm going to add it now. I want to do something first, which is um, this. So now I'm checking the entities, the cardinality of the entities. So check cardinality as lower bound. Uh, okay, uh, lower than upper. Oh, okay, so that is making it harder to read. Yeah, that is too long even for me. So let's say entities. Uh, uh, cardinalities with correct bounds. Oh, I like this with correct bounds. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here, what are we going to check? We are going to check that entities have cardinalities with correct bounds. Uh, and then we are going to check that uh, relationships have cardinalities with correct bounds um, in the module relationships. And somehow we have to merge these results together, these errors together. Uh, for now, I'll just like concatenate the lists. I think that's, that's the only way, maybe. Maybe we could, uh, maybe I could try to do something 
No, okay, let's just concatenate the list. So uh, uh, list dot append maybe, but that is hard to read. So we have the entities errors, this errors, and the <laughs> wait, and the relationship errors. Bounce. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, that that's it. And what are we going to do? We are going to append to the entities arrows. Entities arrows. So if I'm doing something horrible in Glim, please tell me, because sometimes I I may mess things up in a horrible way that I'm not seeing. Uh, maybe doing something super inefficient or, <laughs> or that, that would get Ailey or, or Lewis to kill me. And please tell me in advance. <laughs> um, okay. So these are the arrows. And what are we going to do with the arrows? We are pattern match on it and uh, there's a typo. Okay, where is it? Can you tell me? Because if I'm empty... Oh yeah, arrows. Errors. Okay. Um, okay. So let's pattern match on this, and if there's at least one error, we are going to return a validation result that is failing. If there if there are no errors, that's fine. So case list append first and rest. We are going to uh, return a. Uh, error with a non empty list of errors. So non empty list dot new um, first rest. If the list is empty and we have no, er no errors, okay. And that's it. We have to write the this one. So function. Which is almost identical, I think, to the um, to the relationships list of relationship to the entities case. So maybe we can try to factor something out, like a common pattern. But for now, I just do something stupid and copy paste wherever possible. <laughs> what could go wrong, right? <laughs> so relationship. Let's import that. Oh wait, why isn't relationship? Okay. Um, so what are we going to do? Because relationships, uh, they have um, relationship entity, um, which is the first entity taking part into the relationship, and then a non-empty list of relationships of other entities, because what I wanted to make sure was that a relationship must always have at least two entities, because there can only be a relationship when you have you are connecting at least two entities or an entity with itself, but that counts as two different entities being connected in the AST, so we would have twice the same entity. Um, so this makes sure that we always have at least two entities. Um, okay, so... I can... Oh, it's so late. I said I was going to do a, a short stream for at most one hour, so I think I can finish writing this one and then I, I stop the stream. So, um, we get the relationship entities and we check those. We get the attributes and we check those because attributes need to have uh, an annotation. So yeah, I can already see a common pattern. We have the check the attributes have the cardinality checking to take attributes, maybe? Yeah, exactly. So we do attributes uh, have correct, attributes have correct, uh, attributes cardinalities. Cardinalities have correct bounds. So we take a list of attributes. Uh, we have to import that. 
yeah, I'm happy we had the same idea. So, so I know I'm doing it right. Uh, validation error. And what are we going to do? We are going to map over the attributes list. So, um, use attribute list of flat map uh, attributes. And yeah, let's copy paste this one. And that should be it. And here we can say um dot flat map entity attributes and attributes cardinalities have correct bounds and that should do the trick no because uh i was expecting expected to find function from attribute to list oh yeah well, sorry we do this even easier okay well maybe i could yeah let's not worry about that i can always refactor that later so that's it and then what are we going to do we're going to do the same for relationships so use relationship list dot flat map relationships uh and then we are going to check that attributes coordinates have correct bounds for the relationship dot uh, okay so a relationship has attributes so coordinates have correct bounds wait i cannot see where should i put that the coordinates have correct bounds Oh, I should pipe it into, I should do like something like this. Are you, yeah, when I have like short pipes, I, I'm like with just one thing. Sometimes I, I prefer to keep them on just one line. And um, so um, as long as we don't have the new pretty printer that can keep a short <laughs> pipe on a single line, I just write the function like the normal normal way uh, so yeah for now we'll just keep it like that but yeah I, I do love pipes when I have uh, more than one. Oh yeah that, that's totally far so no you should you should totally keep keep writing in the chat I, I'm really happy that you're commenting because uh, otherwise I feel like I'm talking to myself I'm, and I'm going crazy so <laughs> it's really nice to have someone to, to talk uh, to talk to it's like per programming um, so, uh, yeah, I'm doing this here and we are going to check the attributes for the relationship. So relationship dot attributes. And that is the first, the first error. Uh, but we can also have more error, errors when we are checking cardinalities and, uh, oh wait, what is that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I should cut it because I'm running late. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that that should be it for today. Yeah, I think I'll keep hacking maybe tomorrow. I don't know if I will have the time to stream, but yeah, I had a lot of fun streaming. It was less scary than I anticipated, so I keep doing that. <laughs> Also, it's nice to talk out loud about the code I'm writing. It helps me like figure things out and it's great to have people commenting on it. It's really helpful. So, okay, so that's it for today. Um, I'll try to get as far as possible to have a, to have a, oh yeah, thank you. Thank you, I'm really happy you enjoyed it, Ben. Uh, so maybe we'll see you another time um, next week or on the weekend. So bye-bye, I'm ending the stream now, bye.